Thank you. Hi, so um, my name is Selina. I'm a PhD candidate at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. And today I'll be presenting to you uh, my work entitled The I Square Statistic in Math Analysis of Prevalence, Worthwhile or Worthless. Um, this work was conducted by me and other researchers from the Persis group. So um, prevalence estimates are essential for health-related decision-making uh, since they provide necessary information for the estimation of burden of diseases, for instance, uh, essential for issues uh, such as priority setting definitions, health technology assessments, and so on. And as we all know, uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis are the gold standard methods uh, to synthesize and to summarize evidence available to answer a specific uh, question, which can be about um, the prevalence of a certain condition. And we can observe a increase in the number of uh, published systematic reviews of prevalence over uh, the last decade, especially. And this uh, growth rate in the number of um, systematic reviews of prevalence is actually higher than the growth rate for uh, systematic reviews in general. So it's important that we discuss methods for these reviews. Um, this is a made up example just to bring some concepts. So when we have a meta-analysis of prevalence estimates, what we have uh, on the diamond, uh, this point estimate represents the average uh, of the prevalence of the studies included in the synthesis. So this is uh, an average. Let's say that this is around 38%, so we would, uh, interpret this result as 38% of the population has the condition of interest on average. Uh, the thing is, this average is truly informative only if we don't have uh, a substantial amount of variability uh, among the studies included in the analysis. So just as important as this uh, as this poll result is the distribution of estimates in, of the studies included in the analysis. So we might have a case with a narrow uh, distribution of estimates. And in this scenario, the average pool effect might be useful, but we can also have a wide distribution of estimates around this pool um, result. And in this scenario, the average result is not representative of some of the studies included. So in this case, uh, we need to talk about the dispersion of, of the prevalence estimates. Uh, so the distribution of estimates around the pool estimate is actually the heterogeneity. So just as important as this point estimate, we need to assess the heterogeneity in this type of study, especially because in meta-analysis of prevalence, we usually expect higher levels of uh, heterogeneity than uh, in meta-analysis of intervention, uh, effects of interventions, for instance. So we wonder how uh, reviewers were assessing heterogeneity in meta-analysis of prevalence. And from a sample of 235 systematic reviews of prevalence, we identify 152 that conducted meta-analysis. And in almost 95% of these reviews, authors uh, reported that the heterogeneity was assessed with the I-square statistics. Uh, the I-square value was reported in 134 reviews. And we found out that the medium I-square was 96.9%. And interestingly, almost 78% uh, of, the, of these reviews uh, presented an I-square over 90%, so very high. Uh, this is not a common finding for other type of, uh, for meta-analysis of other type of data. Uh, for an example, uh, this meta-analysis, uh, this study is assessed the I-square in meta-analysis of binary outcomes, and they found a medium or average I-square around 20%, so uh, very high for prevalence meta-analysis. Uh, so we 
try to evaluate if there was any factors, if any of the variables of interest um, were associated with the estimation of I squared in our sample. And we found that more frequently uh, studies with lower number of study, um, reviewers, uh, sorry, meta-analysis with uh, fewer studies were associated with a lower estimation of the I square, lower uh, I square lower than 50%. Uh, we also observed that pool estimates that were considered extreme, uh, less than 10% or more than 90%, so very hair or very common conditions. Uh, in this meta-analysis, more frequently the I square uh, was uh, lower than 50%. So uh, we did not find an association between the transformation method and the I square level, but uh, we have a, a great number of studies that do not report which method they use. So this uh, might have lead to this result. Uh, other insights about heterogeneity and how these studies assess at heterogeneity, uh, commonly arbitrary thresholds were used to classify if the I-square was high, moderate, or low. Uh, also, the result of the I-square was frequently used to justify the choice of a statistical model if fixed or random effects, uh, and also to justify the conduction of sensitivity analysis. So subgroup analysis uh, were conducted in 82 reviews, and studies that reported high I-square values were more likely to have conducted a sensitivity analysis. Uh, interestingly, only three meta-analyses estimated prediction intervals. So uh, a few topics of discussions uh, after I've shown you these results. Uh, first of all, we know that the I-square uh, does not directly inform us about the distribution of effects. Uh, so when you have a high I-square estimate, it's not necessarily the case uh, of high important substantial heterogeneity. Uh, so sometimes you might have an I square that is high, but the distribution of uh, estimates is not very wide. So uh, we need to have caution when we are interpreting the I square result. Uh, we saw that some uh, variables could influence this um, estimation of the I square. Uh, it's known in the literature that many variables could influence this uh, estimation, uh, be associated with lower or higher or biased uh, estimation of I square, such as the variance estimator, the type of outcome, and even the outcome itself. Uh, in proportional data, we expect a small variance uh, in studies with relatively small sample size. So this can also be a factor uh, related to the, the finding that in most cases, the I square were very high. Uh, and in our analysis, as I show you, more often studies with low value of I square included fewer studies and meta-analysis with extreme pool estimates more often presented a low value of I square. Uh, regarding the conduction of uh, subgroup and sensitivity analysis, as we saw, in many cases, the authors uh, conducted this meta-analysis because they were uh, trying to explore the heterogeneity they found with the I-square. Uh, but since the I-square is not a, uh, does not directly inform us about the heterogeneity of these studies, sometimes this sensitivity analysis might be inappropriate. Uh, and we know that when we increase the number of analysis, we can find spurious results due to chance only. And also, since the number of studies included in the subgroup analysis are lower, and so you include fewer studies in subgroup analysis, uh, you have a higher chance to find a lower value of I square. And sometimes the reviewers uh, conclude that this means that the heterogeneity was explained, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, prediction intervals, on the other hand, uh, they inform us the range of estimate uh, of expected estimates. Uh, so 
they should be used to explore this distribution of effects. But it's, uh, as we observed, uh, it's still very underused in meta-analysis of prevalence. So less than 3% of uh, the meta-analysis included in our sample estimated prediction intervals. So just to wrap up, uh, we saw the meta-analysis of prevalence commonly, uh, commonly yields high I-square values and authors mistakenly conclude that the results are heterogeneous. Sometimes that's not the case. Uh, and when we discuss heterogeneity, what we need to focus on is on the description of the expected range of estimates, which can be done using prediction intervals. And in case of substantial heterogeneity, uh, just substantial depends on the question of interest. So it depends on the, each con on the condition and population and the applications you are studying. Uh, so, but if you uh, find that there is substantial heterogeneity in your meta-analysis, uh, you can uh, conduct sensitivity analysis since uh, they were planned. And uh, this can help elucidate why the estimates vary so much. Uh, but we need to avoid using the I-square results to um, justify this sensitivity analysis that were not planned a priori. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention and it was an honor to be here today.